Again, is SpaceX's fourth dedicated small sat rideshare program mission and the 12th mission of 2022. SpaceX is targeting at least three dedicated rideshare flights to sun synchronous orbit per year. And we also offer opportunities to ride to orbit on our Starlink missions, which launch every couple weeks or so. Small sats can ride to space on SpaceX's Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, as well as Starship in the not too distant future. You can see on those live views from the first stage on your left that Falcon 9 is equipped with four hypersonic grid fins positioned near the top of the first stage. And stage one is using these grid fins for steering as it makes its way back down to Earth. Second stage is looking good on the right there in the middle of its first burn, the first of three burns. Those white puffs of gas that you may occasionally see from this first stage are from the, from the attitude control system, and those are nitrogen gas. That's nitrogen gas that's coming out and helps with attitude control of the first stage as it makes its way back down to Earth. Stage two FDS is saved. We're about three minutes from the start of our stage one entry burn. Again, this is a three engine burn and there are three engines in a row on the first stage, which will light up to slow the vehicle down as it enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Vehicle continues to follow a nominal trajectory. If you are just joining us, we did have a successful liftoff of the Transporter 4 mission, which is SpaceX's fourth dedicated small sat rideshare mission and 12th mission of 2022. On your screen are live views from the first and second stage, with the first stage making its way back down towards the Atlantic Ocean to land on our drone ship, just read the instructions, and the second stage on your right in the first of three planned MVAC burns. We're about two minutes from the start of that stage one entry burn, which is about a 20 second burn that slows that first stage down as it enters the Earth's atmosphere. Acquisition signal, Bermuda. Now for today's mission, the stage one landing burn will follow under a minute after the end of our stage one entry burn. And that'll land the first stage on our drone ship, just read the instructions. And to put the deceleration of the landing burn into perspective, Around 60 minutes or 60 seconds away from landing, the first stage is moving about 2,000 miles per hour. Then in less than a minute, we'll rapidly reduce speed in order to prep for landing, and the first stage slows down to just about 87 miles per hour when the landing legs deploy just prior to landing. The Falcon 9 first stage is equipped with four landing legs made out of carbon fiber with aluminum honeycomb and they're placed symmetrically around the base of the rocket, and they'll deploy just prior to landing. We're under 30 seconds to the start of that stage one entry burn. It's a really cool view of the Atlantic Ocean from the first stage on your left. Stage one entry burn startup. It's the start of the stage one entry burn.
stage one entry burn shut down. Did have a successful stage one entry burn. And as I mentioned earlier, we will be attempting to recover stage this. One FTS is safe. Recover this booster for the seventh time today on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Stage one transonic. The first stage has just one more burn left. Terminal guidance. That's the landing burn. We'll be starting here in just a few seconds. And at the same time, the second engine, uh, the MVAC, will actually shut off at the same time as the start of that landing burn. Stage one landing burn. Seco one. There's second engine cutoff one, and you heard that we did start our stage one landing burn. This is about a 20 second burn of the stage single, one. single Don't engine. Orbit insertion. See, we did have a successful landing of our first stage, as well as a confirmation of a nominal second stage orbit in the middle there. Now, now coming up in about five minutes, we are expecting the start of the deployment sequence. There will be 20 deployments of 40 spacecraft, which will occur over a 73-minute period of time. Now, this includes CubeSats, Microsats, PicoSats, non-deploying hosted payloads, and an orbital transfer vehicle carrying spacecraft to be deployed at a later time. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the webcast, due to the lack of the ground station coverage at times, we expect only a handful of our deployments will be visible today. However, we do expect to have telemetry and hear audio confirmation over the nets when in range of ground stations. Now again, to see the full list of deployments for all 40 satellites on today's mission, head over to SpaceX.com. With that said, the first three payload deployments are going to happen during a blackout period where we will lose live camera views and telemetry. There is a possible blackout period when we plan to relight the MVAC engine on the second stage for its second burn at about T plus 28 minutes into flight. Because all critical data is stored and forwarded, we will confirm deployment of the first three payloads once we regain ground station coverage in the Maldives around the T plus 57 minute mark. For now, we're going to take a short break during this blackout period, and we'll leave you with the animation of where we are during this time. If we are able to regain coverage for the relight of our second stage engine, we will come back with live views and confirm on screen. But if not, we'll see you back here in about 40 minutes. 